So the next thing we want to cover is uh, storing functions in data structures. And why would we need that? So uh, as an example, consider uh, the following code, which I'm going to copy paste and place it in a new file. So I'm going to do code funks as struct in struct. Okay, I'm going to do lang racket. Okay, so we saw that um, functions can be used as passed as parameters, and they can be used to extend the behavior of certain function. And the example we saw was where we had an apply n, where we would take a function as a parameter and we'd call that function n times. Um, we also saw examples where we were uh, passing uh, returning functions. Um, that were passed, um, sorry, creating functions dynamically as we are. Um, um, so we saw the use of functions as data structures, basically, right? Where we are, whenever we call a certain function, we saw the example of factory that would create functions according to the number that you pass that factory, and then the function return when you call that would return the value stored. Um, kind of like an object-oriented way of, of thinking about uh, functions. And now I want us to see that we can achieve a similar behavior um, by storing functions in um, a structure. And this is actually uh, common, for instance, if you use uh, any kind of callbacks, if you think about um, like C where you can have, uh, C or Java or whatever, where you can have um, some event and you want to store you want to have a, a function that is run whenever that event is called this is a standard practice in javascript for instance so ideally you want to store that function somewhere so you will store it in a data structure so this is just an example to to show you how that could be done or can be achieved in in racket so first line here in line three what we see is uh, we have a structure and we're saying this is a structure that we are freezing a certain function and uh, its argument. So what I'm going to do after with this frozen is call uh, this function or apply this function to this argument. Okay. Um, so uh, by now you know what a struct is. Um, so how do we call this function? So we're going to create a function called apply1. And what apply1 does is it will build a frozen function. So it will freeze a function for you. You say, what is the function do you want to store? And what is the argument you want to store? And what that will do? Um, it will, oh, actually, sorry, this is a, this is something else. So uh, this uh, apply one, actually, it should be apply two, right? It should be applied the second thing. Let me call it apply two for now. Or apply yeah, I think this is two because it, technically you are calling the function with two arguments. Okay, so this would be argument two, and this would be a frozen, frozen function. Oh, frozen function already has a name, right? Because frozen, there are two accessors, frozen func and frozen arg1. So this will be frozen fr. That's why it was called fr. Okay, so apply two takes a frozen function and takes an argument two, and what it does, it applies um, the function that was stored in this data structure. So you can see here being accessed, and you can see here we're accessing the second, arg uh, the first argument that was stored in the data structure. And next, what we're doing is we're calling the function and passing it two arguments. Okay, so as an example of usage, what we can do is we can freeze um, double. Right, the function that doubles a number. So by doing that, what we, the way we create, the way we freeze a function is by creating a data structure or creating a value of frozen, storing in the first field uh, the the multiplication function, and the number two in the second field, that will be arg one, and then uh, we can define double as uh, calling, call apply to. So 
if I call apply to and I pass frozen double, so frozen double, actually, let me say, ah, yeah, so it's double, so it's already uh, two times something. Um, so it's two times something, which that something is x, right? So if we call apply to, we're going to apply the second argument, oh, sorry, the function to the second argument, and therefore we'll get, um, we'll get, uh, we'll double the results. So let's see how this works. If I, if this works, so if I do rocket, hopefully I didn't introduce, of course I did, I forgot the rack unit. Require rack unit. Okay, so let's see if things work now. Okay, so things are working. Just, uh, but now let's look at what we have. Um, we have, um, let's print out frozen double, just so you guys believe me. Um, and let's print out um, double. Okay, and as you can see, a frozen, this frozen double, is a frozen uh, value that contains in its first field the star function, so the multiplication function, and in second field it's it has uh, contains a t the number two, right? Because we create a frozen like that. Um, and then what we see is that, well, double is just a, a function, right? We can't see the code inside of it. It's kind of pointless to have this here. Um, so, why does this work like that? So if I do a double of three, what that does is it becomes, we unfold, right? So we take the body of the function, which is this. So let's copy paste this. And we replace x by the argument, in this case three. Okay, so now we do the same thing and we do it for uh, this function. So we kind of are inlining already the, the definitions, but uh, let's, let's write it down anyways, just to make everything super clear. So next thing we're gonna do, something like this, right? Where we are inlining the code of, of apply to. Uh, next thing we wanna do is we wanna replace, actually, even before that, we want to evaluate from left to right, right? So we need to evaluate this, which is a variable. So we should should replace this. And let's say that a struct is a special thing that doesn't reduce any further, as you saw when I showed it uh, in the screen. So that's what we have. Uh, and then three, right? So now we want to replace um, fr by this and fr by this, and we want to replace um, arc2 by 3 here, okay? So this is the next step, and then what we do, evaluate top to bottom. So to evaluate this, let's copy-paste it. So in the first step, we want to evaluate uh, the accessor, so fr frozen funk is going to be the first thing. So let's store it like this. Okay, now another step. We replace every occurrence of funk by star. So where is funk? Oh, funk is here. So replace it by star. And we evaluate define. Okay. Next. We evaluate this, so we have two. Finally, we evaluate the define, so we find and replace every arg one by two. Okay, and then finally we have six. Okay, so this is a step-by-step -step execution of what's going on. Let me kind of remove this from here. Okay, step-by-step -step execution of double. Okay, so we saw this, we saw why it works, and here is a, a short 
version of the unfolding. Um, so next thing we can do is um, maybe what we want to do is we want to apply. Um, so in this case, right, we had a data structure that we wanted uh, in this double two, right? We had this uh, structure where we're storing a function and uh, the argument of one of its arguments, right? But in now in this example, what we want to do is we want to define a pipeline, right? So what is this pipeline? Um, it is a list of functions, and I want to call all of those functions to the, a certain value, right? So let me kind of copy paste this. This would be the second example. Okay, example two. We don't need this. We already have double defined, so we don't need it. Um, and now I created, actually let me create a function, plus one. So what plus one does, it takes an x, it does a plus x one. Okay. So now I created a function that contains um, double and plus one. So let me print that out. Some extra parentheses here. Okay, so as you can see, <coughs> I'm going to comment out double because now you've seen how it looks. Uh, and the only thing we have now is a list with two procedures, so two functions. First function is double, second function is plus one. Okay, so now what do I want to do? I want to take a value. I want to write a function that takes a value and keeps applying uh, the next function to that value. So now let me try to write that down. Okay. Let me do as I was uh, doing before by means of examples to kind of show you what I wanted to happen. So I want to write pipeline. So I'm doing this on the fly, so sometimes uh, the, f the code appears a bit different. So if I pass p, right, so the list with two functions, and I pass a value, let's say 10, what I want to happen is, okay, the first thing that I wanted to do is I want to do, well, actually let me expand this and write list, double, plus one. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to do double of, Pipeline, list plus one of 10. So let's do this non-tail recursive. And next, I want to call the next function in the list, which is this one. So I'm going to do double of um, plus one, okay, of pipeline, of plus one, oh, uh, sorry empty list, and 10, okay? And when I reach the base case, I want to return just the value that was stored, okay? So this is what I would like to happen. So now let's try to implement this function. So I write define pipeline, pipeline, okay. And I have a uh, funks here. So I have a data structure, which is a list that has uh, just functions inside of it. Okay, and I have an initial value. Let's call it init, init value. Okay, 
So what I want to do, of course, this is a, this has to be a recursive code, code because I have to go through all the elements of the list. Um, and since I'm going through all the elements of the list, I want to make the list smaller and smaller. So what is my base case? My base case is when the list is empty, right? Which was from here to here. So, um, okay. So when, when I forgot how to write the, the syntax of cont. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what is the condition? We check if the list of functions is empty. So if the, the functions are empty, the list of functions is empty, then we return the init value. Okay. Otherwise, what do we do? We have to make the list smaller. So we're going to need funks, the rest of funks, right? New list, new funks. And we're going to need a current function. It's going to be the first of the list, right? Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to call. So in this case, right, we want to take from, let's go from the first to the second. We have, what we do is we take the first element and we call it to the recursive call. Right, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the current function. I'm gonna call it with one argument, which is gonna be the recursive call pipeline. The new functions and the init value remains the same. Okay. And now I see if this works. This might not work, might be in the reverse order. Let me just check. Yeah, it's in the reverse order. So what this should be doing is it should take, um, let's see, it should take double, right, of plus one of three. Okay, and now it works. Right, um, so I kind of changed the function a bit. I reversed the order, but it kind of makes it a bit easier. So now one question I will ask you and try to answer this. Please pause the video to give the answer. But the question is, is this function tail recursive or is it not? So please pause the video, try to figure this out uh, and then resume. Okay, so I'm gonna assume you've already paused. Uh, this function is not tail recursive because in the tail position, the outermost function being called is not the recursive call. It's not tail recursive. Okay, so we saw an example. We saw two examples of lists being stored, uh, sorry, of functions being stored in data structures. First, we saw it in struct, and secondly, we saw it in a list. So next, what we're going to see is creating functions dynamically.